this video, we're going to take a look at using functions, importing packages, using classes, implementing asynchronous programming. Functions are used to group reusable logic. A function can actually take parameters and return values. Because Dart is an object-oriented language, functions can be assigned to variables or passed as arguments to other functions. If the function executes a single expression, you can use the arrow syntax. All functions return a value by default, and if no return statement is specified, Dart automatically appends to the function body the return null statement, which is implicitly added for you. Since all functions return a value, you can start each function by specifying the return type expected. When calling a function and a return value is not needed, then start the function with the void type, meaning nothing. Using the void type is not required, but it's recommended for readability. But when the function is expected to return a value, start the function with the type of data being passed back like a boolean, an integer, a string, a list, and so on, and use the return statement to pass a value. The following examples show different ways to create and call functions and return different types of values. The first example shows the app's main is a function with void as a return type. The second example has a void as the return type, but the function takes an integer as a parameter, and when the code is executed, the print statement shows the value to the log terminal. Since the function is expecting a parameter, you call it by passing the value like order espresso, and in parentheses, you pass the number 3. The third example builds upon the second example of receiving a parameter and returns a Boolean value as a return type. Just after the function, a Boolean is ordered on variable is initialized by the calling the function and passing a value of 3. Then the print statement shows the Boolean value sent back by the function. To use an external package, library, or an external class, use the import statement. Separating code logic into different class files allows you to separate and group code into manageable objects. The import statement allows access to external packages and classes. It requires only one argument, which specifies the uniform resource identifier, known as the URI, of the class or library. If the library is created by a package manager, then you specify the package scheme before the URI. If importing a class, you specify the location and class name or the package directive. All classes descend from object, the base class for all Dart objects. A class has members, variables, and methods, and uses a constructor to create an object. If a constructor is not declared, the default constructor will be provided automatically. The default constructor provided for you has no arguments. Now, what is a constructor and why is it needed? A constructor has the same name as the class, with the optional parameters. The parameters serve as getters of values when initializing a class for the first time. Dart uses synthetic sugar to make it easy to access values by using the disk keyword, referring to the current state in the class. A basic class with a constructor would have this simple layout. In the previous example, uses a constructor with synthetic sugar, fruit, this type. And the constructor is called in this manner, fruit equals fruit, with the value apple. To use name parameters, enclose the parameter in curly brackets, fruit, in the open and close curly brackets, this type. And call the constructor in this manner, fruit equals the fruit, the type, colon, and the value, which is in this case is apple. Imagine passing three or four parameters. I prefer to use name parameters to keep the code readable. Each parameter is optional unless you specify with the at required that is a required parameter. In a class, 
methods are functions that provide logic for an object. Now, methods can return a value or void, meaning no value or empty. In programming, inheritance allows objects to share traits. To inherit from other classes, use the extends keyword. Use the super keyword to refer to the superclass, the parent class. Constructors are not inherited in the subclass. Now, in this example, you'll take the barista name constructor class and use inheritance to create a new class that inherits the parent class traits. Declare a new class with the name barista instance using the extends keyword and the name of the class you're extending, which here is barista named constructor. The inherited class constructor looks just a little bit different than the previous declarations. At the end of the constructor, you add a colon and super, referring to the super class. When the barista inheritance class is initialized, it inherits the parent class traits, meaning it can access variable and methods, class functions, from the barista name constructor. Mixins are used to add features to a class and allow you to reuse the class code in different classes. In other words, the mixins allow you to access class code between unrelated classes. To use a mixin, you add the with keyword followed by one or more mixin names. Place the with keyword right after the class name declaration. The class that implements a mixin does not declare a constructor. Usually the mixin class is a collection of methods. In the following example, the mixin class barista mixin no constructor is a method called find barista from location that returns a string. This method calls the locate barista service and returns the barista name in a specified location. Now, usually you would have multiple methods in the class to perform different code logic. The class barista with mixing uses the barista mixing no constructor mixing class via the with keyword. Classes that use the mixing can declare constructors. In this class, you have the method retrieve barista name from location that calls the mixin class method find barista from location to retrieve the barista name from a location. Notice that you call the find barista from location without specifying the class it belongs to. In a mobile application, you use a lot of asynchronous or async programming. Async functions perform time consuming operations without waiting for the operation to complete. In Dart, to not block the UI, we use functions that return future or stream objects. A future object represents a value that will be available at some point in the future. For example, calling a web service to retrieve values might be fast or take a long time. You do not want to stop the user from using the app while the process is running. By using a future object, as the function retrieves the values, it returns control to the UI and the user continues to use the app. Once the values are retrieved, it will update the UI with the new data. The async and await keywords are used in conjunction. Mark the function as async and place the await keyword before the function that will return data in the future. Note that functions marked async must have a return type assignable to future. In this example, the total cookies count function implements a future object that returns an integer value. To implement a future object, you start the function with the future and then integer, integer and invalid data type, the function name, and the async keyword. The code inside the function that returns a future value is marked with the await keyword. The lookup total cookies count database method represents a call to a web server to retrieve data and is preceded by the await keyword. The await keyword allows the request to be made, and instead of waiting for the data to come back, it continues executing the next block of code. Once the data is retrieved, the code continues to finish the function and returns the value.